Today I'm going to show you some pros and cons about the Sick Bike Parts Expansion Chamber Exhaust. This is Sick Bike Parts Expansion Chamber Exhaust. I apologize. It doesn't come wrapped and it doesn't normally have this header on it. Um, I apologize for my terrible welts as well. In my setup I had to use an exhaust wrap just to keep myself from burning my leg. But what it normally comes with is the expansion chamber itself, which is about this long, and it usually cuts off right about here. It doesn't come wrapped, and it normally comes with a header about, about that long. It comes with some silicone couplings, a couple 45 degree angle copper fittings, and some stainless steel clamps. I think there's a few more that come with it. I apologize because... I've had this for over a year and I don't have the original equipment, but I tried to replicate it as best as possible. It also comes with an aluminum exhaust gasket. This isn't an aluminum, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Some of the pros. This is probably the biggest change in power output I have had on this motor itself. Depending on your header length, which is from your jug itself, to the expansion chamber itself, you can um, you can really increase your power output. The longer the header, the more low range you'll have. The shorter the header, the more high range you'll have. But you have to remember, you can put your power range out of reach. If you have too short of a header, you'll rev out. You won't be able to actually get to the point where you'll have a usable power range using this. I think mine's about nine and a half, ten inches long, and um, something with that is the power really kicks in at about 20 miles an hour with a 36 tooth sprocket. And before this exhaust, I was able to hit, you know, maybe 35, 36 on a good day. And after I put it on, tuned it out, I, you know, got it to a usable power range. It really feels like a turbo spooling up and kicking in. That's why they say you can feel the pipe kick in. And I can reach, you know, 40 easy on, you know, just a regular day. I've, I've even seen, you know, 43, 44 on flat with no wind behind me. And that's the, that's the pro about this. It makes such a huge difference to your power range, depending on how you, how you want to use it. Um, there are quite a few cons with this, though some you can't help. Um, what you can't help is normally you'd have to take these copper fittings and do some sort of a configuration to you know either go down and out the back by your uh, rear tire. I have it over the right pedal and just tucked underneath my thigh because that's that's what would work with my configuration. I couldn't get it to fit underneath otherwise that's the way I would have had it. Um, something else is you've got to use these uh, silicone couplers with this copper pipe and these stainless steel clamps with that, and that works just fine. The only problem I had was it just wouldn't stay together very well. I mean, they try to, you know, make it as universal as possible, which is awesome on their part to, you know, try to make it fit as many applications as possible. But I just, I botched my old exhaust, and I, as you can tell, it was my first time welding. Um, and so I just made a header that would work. As long as it seals right, and you're, you know, you're getting your exhaust to your expansion chamber, then you're going to, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be flying along all day long. But if it doesn't stay together, and you're, you've got an open header because this falls off, then you're going to have some problems. So... What's great about it is you you get such a more usable power range and you can it's just one of those once you get it set up correctly, you have an awesome time. But getting it set up will take you at least an hour minimum. I mean, I think it took me a few hours before I got it dialed in and, you know, a a good a good header length that, you know, fit the kind of usage I needed. I end up going about, I think, I, I cruise about 30, 35 ish normally, and I've still got loads of power left um, if I ever need to speed up for something or if I'm trying to, you know, catch up with my friends or something to that effect who are, you know, took a different way and I, I got lost or whatever. Um, I didn't 
talk about this, but like I said, I didn't use the aluminum one. I couldn't get it to seal. It didn't work for me. I had to Dremel it out to match the port, and it ended up not working anyways. It leaked like none other. I was just having oil spew everywhere. And that could be my fault. I may have got a dud. I may not have put it on wrong, which is totally possible. Um, but I just ended up using my old gasket, and it worked just fine. Um, something else is, I don't know if you guys can see very well, but it's ported out in here. I mean, it's not a great port. I did that about a year and a half ago when I first got into, you know, the, the motorbike scene. And when I first got it, I'm telling you, it was, it was the size of the stock exhaust gasket. And there's no way it would flow well at all. What this basically is, it, my coworker actually mentioned it when I brought it in. Uh, to have it worked on. Um, it, it is literally um, where your door locks into. It fits up perfectly. So if you ever need some sort of an extra one of these, you can probably make one out of a out of a, a door plate or whatever you want to call that. I don't know what it's actually called. But you can probably make another one out of that. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, this kit is perfectly for you. If you, you know, can sit down and do some trivial tasks, then I completely recommend it. It makes a humongous difference. Um, I definitely recommend doing the actual exhaust pipe itself, though. That's the only problem with this. Um, you know, like botch your old exhaust. Do whatever you can to get some actual metal piping in there, and to try not to use these copper fittings because that's just a pain in the rear. Um, but if you're one of those people who wants to just bolt something on and, you know, go on your way, I wouldn't recommend it. Get one of the other kits that's, you know, a universal, just kind of like stock setup, but, you know, better flowing. And that's what I recommend. So if, you, if you're willing to tinker with something, awesome, get it. If you want to bolt on something, don't get it. But if you want some power, this is probably the... the I wouldn't say it's the best exhaust, but for bang for the buck, I definitely say it's probably the best modification you can get.